So if you're thinking to start a business, do not continue, okay, until you finish this video. Now you might be wondering, who the frick is this chick talking? Now, to your respect, I have not built a multi-gajillion dollar company, but I have started, succeeded, and also failed at multiple business all before the age of 19. I'm currently 19 right now. And I just wanted to make this video for myself. To be honest, I literally made a list of the four businesses I officially kind of started and like what went wrong in the span of like literally two years. So I wanted to go over over what you need to know and why I failed and how this can help you when making money online. So let's just get started with the first business. All right, so this dates back into 2017. I started a little company or venture, or whatever you wanna call it, called SOJ Creative. Now, if you were to ask Jade when she was 16 why she started SOJ Creative, she couldn't answer that question. Until this day, I still can't answer the question, but I did remember I had a whole website, a team, and apparently I was making some sort of money. So I consider that as a business. Whether it's large or small, I did something. I don't even know what I did, but I did. But the reason why it was so confusing is because I didn't really know what problem I was solving. Now, if I had to say what SOJ Creative was, is basically a marketing content agency where we would create content for brands in Portland. Honestly, now that I think about it, I don't think we successfully got clients, but we definitely made and partnered with brands to create beautiful videos for their Facebook ads. I'll show you guys some examples. Here is one we did with a company called Handful bra. This is another company we did called True Gear. And I believe we had one more for another company called PDW Bikes. And now that I think about it, I think we're actually pretty successful. What? So yeah, we were creating videos for brands and I was like 16 or 15. And I had a team. I remember there were like five or six people that were a part of the company or Saj Creative. And it was pretty dope. Like I remember I was still in high school at this time and like pretty pumped to have something to be working on. I can't remember if I made any money, but I remember getting products from brands and making content and getting supported by people around me. Now, this was all fun and dandy in 2017, but it quickly died in 2018 because of the first problem we ran into. So the reason why SOJ Creative did not see the day of light and not continue is because we couldn't figure out how to charge and price the videos we were making. So I had a lack of clarity of what my work was valued and the brands didn't know how to use the content to get them the maximum return on investment. So basically I can't price and they can't pay. It's a nightmare. And Quickly, I realized the importance of not only just making content, but also understanding what the value is because we just made content for them to use for wherever. But just because you say use it for wherever, brands don't know what to do with it. So I soon realized that Sash Creative wasn't going to work and I just stopped kind of engaging with it. It sounds really sad and I'll talk about it. Now that I think about it, I actually think it was going to be really successful just because we were making so many videos for brands. We had like, such a great portfolio and I felt like I could have charged brands at least like a thousand dollars per campaign. I was nervous as a 16 year old to go up to brands and be like, hey, this is how much we charge. You know, walking into a room with a 40 year old CEO and you're like 16 is definitely intimidating. So basically I learned two important lessons within Saj Creative. One, know your value and two, ask. Now that's the first business we're talking about, but I actually had a business way before 2017 and it was in 2008 when I had my first e-commerce store. So if you guys don't know my whole story, my name's Jade. Hi, welcome. I start businesses and apparently I don't finish. But long story short, I started another business when I was like nine or 10 and we sold squishies, which are keychains that are made out of this foam material. So it was like a stress ball essentially. And it was really successful, I would say. And I sold it on Amazon, Weebly, eBay, and Etsy. So these squishies key change would be imported from AliExpress and exported at the comfort of my garage and I would fulfill orders and I was like nine or ten. I could simply say the reason why this failed was because I was a kid and I didn't know how to manage a business. I honestly was just not focused and I just did school and business and I didn't know the priorities. So I stopped the whole squishy business because I just didn't have time and I wanted to be a kid and I don't really count it because I don't think I gave it the proper attention it needed. But yeah, I had an e-commerce store when I was 10 and it was super fun launching and growing an e-commerce store. Now onto the next few businesses that are more recent. Let's just talk a little bit about what I consider business. Like I feel like a lot of people think you need to have a 40 million person employee team and have a huge company with an office building. And that's honestly not the definition of a business to me. Having a business is all about having a product that solves a customer's problem and for a customer to want it so much that they'll pay money. And now sometimes that part of the equation doesn't matter. Like I have friends with multi-million dollar startups that raise like $5 million and they're not making any 
pay revenue because their goal is to get users to later monetize for their data. So just want to let you guys know there's so many different types of businesses. And if you're thinking to start one, I would definitely keep watching this video, but realize that you don't have to make so much money to consider it a company. It could be as simple as an e-commerce store that you started for fun, an Etsy store, or even just a YouTube channel that you're making money on. So I just want to let you know there's so many definitions of businesses. You don't have to be tied to just one definition. With that being said, the next business we have is, oh my God, it's really embarrassing. Personal brand journey. I am not talking about the text message software we had. I'm talking about the first version of an app I built in 2018. I'm like literally twitching as I like talk about it. I'm so uncomfortable. Now the version one is way different than the version two and I'll quickly talk about that. So what personal brand journey is, is I created an app for content creators to learn one thing every single day to get closer to becoming a full-time creator. So that was essentially the app. It would drip feed content every day to the feed so people can learn something new every day. And it was the curriculum that I made by myself in the help of my dad who creates software. And we created this and launched it. It was actually pretty successful. Like we got 5,000 users in that first literal day, which I'm like, cool Jade, but we didn't know how to make money from it. Like there was no monetization strategy at all, but we had interest from users. This is literally another example of how having a product that solves people's problems and can't make revenue is sometimes completely normal. Now the greatest example of this is Facebook, right? Facebook had so many users and the app was free and they didn't know how to make money. But the minute they launched Facebook ads, they're able to monetize through advertisers. So, you know, I was not creating the next Facebook, but on that smaller scale, I had the faith that even though I couldn't monetize, like let's try to make something work out and figure it out along the way. Now, the issue with the figure it along the way method is when you don't have any revenue to begin with or any capital, it's really hard to continue. So my biggest mistake with that specific business was not figuring it out soon enough because there's a certain point where if you don't figure it out, you personally lose interest in the thing you were working on because you're not making money from it. Therefore, you have to worry about other ways to make income. Because I waited almost like too long, I had to make money somewhere else through coaching calls and YouTube videos. So I literally just forgot about maintaining it and I got just so busy with making more money on other way, like aspects, I was like, what's the point of this? And there's nothing bad that happened. I'm actually so grateful for all these experiences, but I definitely could say if I were able to redo it, I would just try to have at least a safety net or a savings account before starting it. Because if I could put all my attention onto the app versus like trying to make money along the way, like I think it would have been more successful. We ended up actually rebranding it to the second version, which is the same name, but basically it was a text messaging platform. So I'm not gonna even go into that because that's actually still running and still doing pretty good. But we ended up changing the product Product and just basically shutting down the app version of it and switching it to like a software. But pivoting is completely normal in business. And I hope to let you know that even if you quit something, it's not fully quitting because technically any idea you start will always evolve into something else. And you'll take those lessons you learned along the way to create the next better thing. Now, with all that being said, it leads me to the last company that failed. And it's the most recent that I would consider failed. And it's really, really hard for me to talk about this one because it was literally three months ago. So I'll tell you guys a story. I started a company in 2019 called Eat Like. And Eat Like is a place where you can eat like your favorite people. We would take influencers and create food boxes that are in collaboration with brands to create affordable ways to try new products through influencers. And we had a very successful campaign in the winter of 2019. We launched it with almost 10 influencers. And in total, we were a 1.5 million follower network. We were selling hundreds of boxes. We were collaborating with dozens of brands. We were flying from like LA to SF to wherever to meet with those companies to create these boxes. And I was at the same time fulfilling all the orders by myself with the help of my parents. I thought Eat Like was gonna be huge. Like I thought Eat Like was, like I was even doing revenue plans, but the goal this year was to make 100,000, next year a million, and then the year after that, like 5 million. Like I had this whole roadmap of how this was gonna be the biggest idea, like a multi-million dollar company. So you might be wondering, Jade, how did it actually fail and what did you learn from it? So this is actually what happened. The way Eat Like business worked is that brands would send us product for free in exchange for market research. Research. So basically a big portion of it was brands sending us product because if they didn't send us product, then we would lose money per box because we had to buy each order. Each box was around $20. So when brands sent us the product for free, then we could actually make like a $10 margin after shipping and handling and labor, right? So that's how we make money through the boxes itself by the customers buying it. The issue was when brands started to slowly send less and less product, we had to buy more product from them because we had to ship orders. Like people were buying it because the influencers were posting 
testing it, but we couldn't keep up because brands started to pull out due to coronavirus because they had low inventory. There were so many reasons why this happened, but we were short on supply. We had to buy products. And at this point we were losing money every customer. So in April, I had to pull the plug because every box we were selling, we were losing $10 versus making $10, if that makes sense. And I just couldn't invest anymore because I also had to work on a YouTube channel, launching other content. I was still working with brands and I just was super stressed. Like I remember like every weekend I would have to ship orders, buy product and like lose money in the hopes that I would make it back somehow after this whole virus thing. And it was so hard to let down like the influencers we were working with. Like we were working with such talented creators that have multi-million views and it was hard because they're my friends as well. And I was just like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And luckily my team and the influencers were supportive. They're understanding, but I feel like I could have done something better and I don't know what it had been. And I think I have to be honest with myself and I told myself I did my best. And honestly, I wouldn't redo anything because I tried so hard. I invested so much of my money to the point where I was losing money because I wanted to make this vision happen and not let anyone down. And at one point I had to just pull the plug so I could actually be realistic and continue other projects. And no one really knows because I don't know why I don't want to talk about it. It was like really, it was my baby. Like a business is a child and for it to like not work out is really painful sometimes. I definitely think my learning lesson with Eat Like is that even if you try your best, timing has so much to do with a business. And no matter how hard you try, there is luck involved. I know not a lot of people like it, but I like to think that I could, I tried everything and if only I had more money and if only I had more resources, I could do it. But in the capacity I had and the time I was in, that was the best I could do. And you have to understand as an entrepreneur or person that's looking into business that sometimes the best that you can do is the best that you can do. And it's period. It's like, that's it. And it was so hard for me to accept like this is the best I can do because I don't want to accept that like what like this needed to be a multi-million dollar company what are you talking about and i realized like nope that's the best you could do and i'm not to say i'm not going to try again in the future but like learning from that experience it basically taught me that it's okay not to always have every idea work because regardless the lesson that you learned throughout that process is more valuable than maybe the end result because now what i can do is in my next company which i can't wait to talk about now because i have this new project i know how to handle adversity and i know that it's okay not to make it work. And actually it's gonna help me because I'm able to take more risks and be a little bit more fearless because a lot of people have a problem starting just in the first place. And I think with that lesson, I have a little less fear because I've done it before. And I'm like, you know what? If I fail, it's okay. I at least enjoyed the process. And you have to really enjoy the process when starting a business because it's not all about making money. You might lose money. You might not even make money. And as long as you can say that you love the process, it is worth the experience and you learn so much along the way. So within all my companies, whether it's Saj Creative, the e-commerce store, PBJ, or Eat Like, I've learned a lot. I don't regret anything. And if anything, I learned so much that my next company will be better. And I am working on a new company. You guys already know that I start so many businesses, like you don't even know. But the reason why is because I was just trying to figure out myself and what I like and didn't know. So I will now tell you guys what I've been currently working on. So throughout this entire experience, I had a holding company called XH Media. It's just the name of the LLC we run all our finances through. So all the products that I work on is under one company, if that makes sense. So X8 Media for the beginning was just a holding company. But now what we do is we create informational videos for brands in the technology, finance, and entrepreneurship space. So some of our projects are being released in the fall of this year. And I just like, I can't wait because it's insane. But one of our projects is actually live on the green room. We partnered with a company called Vocal, which is a platform for creators to write and earn money. And we created three videos for them in collaboration with other influencers. And we produced, wrote the scripts and created the whole concept for that marketing. So basically we launch video campaigns for brands and it's been a really amazing journey. We've had a handful of clients with larger retainers that allowed me to hire more people and just grow a little bit more. So I've been working on that like day and night and it's actually been super fun. And and all the lessons I've learned were super applicable to X8 Media and what we've been doing. And I'm like so excited because the next project we have is one of the largest I can't say much about, but it's very exciting and I'm really looking forward. So that's kind of the main projects we've been working on. X8 Media, just creating videos for brands, onboarding new clients. I've personally just been on Zoom calls all day, to be honest, and just managing our team. Now, I don't want X8 Media just to be a video production company. I'd love to do something more. And I'm just really passionate about helping you guys start something. 
something and start a business or make a real creative job out of making videos. So that's why I am also working on an incubator program and I actually wanted to get your feedback. So this idea came up with probably a week and a half ago and it's something that I think about day and night also. So essentially with the branded projects that we're doing, we're basically able to hire on influencers with a pretty good budget and give them an opportunity to teach on our platform. And throughout this process, I basically realized that I am really passionate about working with creative people and working with brands that align with our mission, which is growing and making creative careers happen. And I realized like, why not do this at a bigger scale? So I'm basically working in the fall time as well, launching a incubator program with five other creators that are going to be you guys actually. And we're going to basically help you mentor, grow, get brand deals. And you don't have to pay us anything. We just take an income shared agreement on this. We basically just split our revenue and it's kind of like a management program, but instead of just like giving you brand deals and stuff, we want to teach you and mentor you about overall business as well. So we're going to bring in like financial advisors, people can, that can help you rearrange capital, get funding if you need help with travel or getting money for new equipment. Like I want to build an incubator program that not only just gives you money and opportunities, but also teaches you how to really make YouTube or social media a full-time career. It's going to be called Create. I just announced this for the first time. I don't even know how I feel, but I would love your feedback. And if you'd be interested, let me know. We're on the super early stage of research and recruitment, and I would love to know what you think about it and would be appreciated if you could comment below some feedback on this video. I'm going to look at your comments to see your thoughts, but yeah, that's what I've been up to. I'm always into just creating something that's meaningful to me and then making it bigger so I can reach more people. So throughout my experiences, I've been motivated, not just about the money aspect. That's like my least of my motivation, but really just to help you guys throughout your creative careers. So that's why at X8 Media, I think I'm for the first time can say I'm super aligned with what I'm working on to what my passion is. And that's through creating videos and teaching how to build a career on social media. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Darmination, I love you so much. I can't believe some of you guys have sticked with me since the same day I started Sage Creative, which is the stupidest thing that I started because I don't even know what I did, but I love you guys and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I will see you guys in the next upload. And remember that when starting something, it doesn't need to be perfect. You don't even have to make money from it. Just enjoy the process and have fun with telling your story. I'll talk to you guys soon.